In this video, we're going to analyze an episode of the Joe Rogan Experience so you can see how two people can go from seemingly unimportant small talk to a much more meaningful conversation in a matter of minutes. So if you're an introverted person and you want to make conversation with people, but you simply don't know how to behave or what to say, by the end of this video, you'll have a better understanding of some simple things we can do to make our conversations flow more easily and have more positive interactions with people, even if we don't know them very well. Now, in this clip, you're about to watch Joe Rogan and Theo Vaughn are chatting about life in Austin, Texas, and Joe's plans for building a new comedy club in the city. And before I start this clip, I want to remind you that the first 90 seconds are going to be pretty boring. You might find yourself thinking, why am I listening to this? But just be patient and keep watching the video, and I promise you will see how easy it can be to turn a dull conversation into something much more interesting. So let's check it out. Do you miss the comedy store? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. I miss the camaraderie. I miss the fun hangs. Like, we used to hang out yeah. in the back bar and hang out in the green room. That's the, and hang out in the parking lot. That's the fun I miss out of the comedy store. But we have that in Austin. You know, the Austin hang is amazing. It's yeah. amazing here. You know? Yeah, I was talking to Adam Eagy yesterday. He said you guys were hanging out. I got to show you the club. Oh, yeah. Yeah, huh? yeah, yeah. We can't talk too much about it, but okay. I'll, I'll show you some shit later. Yeah, I'm excited. That's cool, man. Yeah, it's gonna be wild. How many time? How many days are you in town for? Mm, I think till Thursday or Friday. Oh, okay. I can stay either one. So I know I'm gonna do. Yeah, I'm gonna. I think we're gonna do a show Wednesday. Yeah, we can do it tomorrow too if you want. Um. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm around. Okay. Well, tomorrow during the day, I'll take you to the club. Oh yeah. Because it's in mid mid construction right now. It's wild. Are you it's nervous about it? No, I'm excited. That's cool. I'm real excited. All right, so I want to stop here and just point out really quickly that simply asking people how they feel about their experience is a great way to encourage them to speak in more detail. And most of us will ask what happened. So the response we usually get is a chronological sequence of events, right? This happened, then this happened, then this happened, the end. But when we ask how the experience affected our conversation partner, we give them an opportunity to share something more personal which almost instantly leads to a more interesting conversation and a deeper connection. Are you nervous about it? No, I'm excited. That's cool. I'm real excited. Yeah. That's fun. But just like the way it is right now, if nothing changed, if we didn't have another club, if this what we had now is all we have forever, it's great. It's still the, good. The Vulcan is amazing. Can I get that lighter? Yeah, The for Vulcan's sure, amazing, man. We're having so much fun. We did a show last night, sold out show last night. We do them all the time. Yeah, I thought about coming through, but uh, instead I decided to get some sleep. Mm. And I went to a trainer this morning. It's important to stop here because this is a great example of the mistake many of us make whenever someone is telling us about their life experience. Joe just mentioned the fact that he had a sold-out comedy show last night. And Theo completely disregarded it by communicating that his sleep was more important than that. But how many people can say they had a sold-out show last night? Not many at all. It sounds like a pretty rare experience and a perfect opportunity for one to say, tell me more about that. These words are an introvert's secret weapon. Any variation of these five simple words are all an introvert needs to keep a conversation going for hours. And we're going to see how in just a second. But let's watch that part of the clip again because there's something else you should pay attention to. The Vulcan's sure, amazing, man. We're having so much fun. We did a show last night. Sold out show last night. We do them all the time. Yeah, I thought about coming through, but uh, instead I decided to get some sleep. Mm. And I went to a trainer this morning. Dude, I've been feeling a lot better since I started going to a tr trainer. Is this uh, this trainer with the purse? Is this a new one that you just tried? This was just a uh, tr one that I tried in this area. Yeah. How'd you get hooked up with them? Just on the internet. Craigslist? <laughs> no. no. <laughs> <It was> like, <laughs> Notice how Joe reacted when Theo almost completely disregarded what he said. Theo started talking about himself, and Joe immediately put his attention back on Theo. He wasn't offended or discouraged, and he didn't let that stop him from engaging in the conversation. He just let it go. Now, the reason this is so important is because some introverts have a tendency to get discouraged when they share something about themselves, and it seems that no one cares. I know I used to feel that way. But the reality is that this is just a casual conversation. People don't have any obligation to listen attentively to us or take interest in who we are as people. Some people will find you interesting and others won't. And that's okay. You need to develop the ability not to take that personally 
and remain engaged in the conversation. Just go with the flow and don't take it or yourself too seriously. But getting back to the actual conversation, notice how Theo's response caused a lull in the conversation. The For Vulcan's sure, amazing, man. We're having so much fun. We did a show last night, sold out show last night. We do them all the time. Yeah, I thought about coming through, but uh, instead I decided to get some sleep. Mm. This is the point at which most conversations die because there's a moment of silence and nobody knows what to do. Some people look for the quickest and easiest way to exit the conversation. and Others try to occupy this silence with filler words like, yeah, mm-hmm, so, ah, that's cool. But there's a third option, my friend. Whenever a conversation reaches a dead end, simply change directions. Just start talking about something else. Anything else. It really doesn't matter what the topic is. What's important is that you keep the conversation going. The point of doing this is not to sound like the most interesting person in the world. The point is to give the other person something to work with. And that's exactly what Theo does. He just continues to throw out possible topics, almost as if he instinctively knows that Joe is going to pick one and keep the conversation going. Mm. I went to a trainer this morning. Dude, I've been feeling a lot better since I started going to a tr trainer. Is this uh, this trainer with the purse? Is this a new one that you just tried? This was just a uh, tr one that I tried in this area. Yeah. How'd you get hooked up with them? Just on the internet. Craigslist? No. 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 <laughs> <It was> like, <laughs> <laughs> I got an assistant lady that helps me out. She set it up. Okay. So, you got an assistant, huh? Just for some, like, just scheduling stuff makes things easier. I decided to take more like pressure that. off myself. Yeah, I'm going to use this yeah. match, though. I don't like that. Uh, you don't like the lighter? It's too much. Too much. Notice by how using that particular tone, Joe communicates what all of us are thinking. Most people don't have assistants managing their schedules. So when someone says they have an assistant working for them, we think, wow, you're so successful and busy that you're paying an assistant to help manage your life. So you must be a big shot now, huh? You must be a superstar, right? And what's interesting about us as people is we subconsciously feel this need to set the record straight when someone has the wrong idea about us. For example, if we are humble people, we don't want others to think we're arrogant. And in this case, Joe's tone of voice says, oh, so you're a big and successful superstar now, is that right? Almost with the feeling of contempt for what Theo said. And immediately, Theo felt the need to clarify what he said. Now, I'm not saying that Joe actually felt contempt because I obviously don't know what the man felt. I'm just saying what his tone of voice communicated and how I believe it made Theo react. Because sometimes it's not what you say, but how you say it that makes people want to talk more. I got an assistant lady that helps me out. She set it up. Okay. So, you got an assistant, huh? Just for some, like, just scheduling stuff makes things easier. I decided to take more like pressure that. off myself. Yeah, I'm going to use this yeah. match, though. I don't like that. Uh, you don't like the lighter? It's too much. Too much. Just too hardcore. Yeah. Yeah, I don't have, like, an assistant. Like, I don't have, like, somebody who's, like, a... Uh, Waiting on your hand and foot. Yeah, I don't have, like, have? a maid or anything. I just have somebody that helps schedule stuff and put it into the calendar, you know? Mm. So, some, some stuff like that it makes it easier on me. Sure. So, yeah, I've been just scaling back a little bit more. Yeah. Taking it easy. I got a trainer. And, man, I've been feeling so much better. You look good. Thanks, man. Yeah, you look healthy. All right. Now, you might think that this is boring small talk about nothing in particular. And it is. <laughs> Theo is going on and on about something that doesn't seem to be very interesting or important. But when someone is sharing things about their life and telling you what's new with them, they're bringing you into their world and letting you know what it's like to be them. Now, many of us tend to say, mm-hmm, yeah, all right, when we're not really interested in these seemingly mundane things that people tell us about themselves. But by keeping a curious mind and seeing every interaction as a chance to learn something about someone, you can make casual conversations last a lot longer and encourage people to share very personal things with you. And we're about to see that happen in just a moment. So, yeah, I've been just scaling back a little bit more. Yeah. Taking it easy. I got a trainer. And man, I've been feeling so much better. You look good. Thanks, man. Yeah, you look healthy. And notice how Theo continues to speak about himself while Joe is doing nothing more than listening attentively and affirming the things that Theo is saying. Theo says he's been working out and feeling so much better. And what does Joe do? He acknowledges that with some encouraging words, right? You look good. You look healthy. So another quick tip I have for you is when somebody's sharing good news with you, celebrate with them. And if they're sharing bad news with you, then mourn with them. Now, 
Theo subconsciously knows he's free to continue expressing himself. Joe is interested and he's saying encouraging things, right? He's reciprocating the effort being made by Theo. And man, I've been feeling so much better. You look good. Thanks, man. Yeah, you look healthy. I feel so much better even the last time I was here. Really? Oh, man. What's the difference? For one, it's the training. Yeah? Oh, yeah. that's nice. I nice. mean, it's like, because for 20 years, I was like a meathead, you know? I was mm-hmm. like, you know, I used to do the steroids and everything, dude. You know, we used to, you know, we used to, you know, I used to be into it. You right? know what I'm saying? All right. Fucking, you know. Yeah. Urgh. Yeah. Urgh. Let me hear a grr. That's real. I'll sweat on your fucking children. Whoa. You know Jesus. what I'm saying? Like, that's who I was, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying, dude? I'll fucking eat one of my own hands, dude. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's who I was, bro. You're crazy. All right, what I want you to notice at this point in the conversation is how Theo continues to share things about himself unashamedly. He's just being open and letting you get to know him. And that's something I really recommend you start doing because you might think that you're not that interesting. You might think that nobody cares what you have to say, but nobody can get to know you or even get more interested in you if you don't share things about who you are and what you're interested in and what you do and things like that. So you need to be open enough to allow people to get to know you because then you go from just asking a bunch of questions to also answering questions because now people are interested in you and the things you're saying about yourself, you know? And you could see on Theo's face, he was being very expressive, right? You can tell he really feels what he's saying. Because for 20 years, I was like a meathead, you know? I was mm-hmm. like, you know, I used to do the steroids and everything, dude. You know, we used to, you know, we used to, you know, I used to be into it. You right. know what I'm saying? I'll right. Fucking, you know. Yeah. So the next tip I have for you is speak with emotion. Being introverted is not an excuse, bro. Even if you're an extrovert watching this video, it really applies to everyone. If you're talking about the way you feel, demonstrate with your voice and your face and your body how you feel. Don't just sit there like telling the story like kind of like this. Tell the story with emotion in your voice so I can feel you. Even if I can't see your face, you can feel my energy through the speakers. You understand what I'm saying? So share things about yourself unashamedly and don't be afraid to show emotion. It doesn't make you weak. It doesn't make you weird. It doesn't make you lame. It makes you interesting. Okay? Let's continue. All right. Fucking, you know. Yeah. Yeah, Grr. me here, girl. Grr. That's real. All right, notice how at this point Joe reacts to what Theo is saying by playfully telling him to growl. And the reason this is important is because sometimes conversations are serious, right? But other times they're just like a playful dance, like two kids playing in the sandbox. You know what I mean? So allowing yourself and your partner to be silly and imaginative will let the conversation flow without grand expectations or pressure. All right? Fucking, you know. Yeah. Grr. Yeah, Grr. me here, girl. That's real. I'll sweat on your fucking children. Whoa, you know Jesus. what I'm saying? Like that's who I was, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying, dude? I'll fucking eat one of my own hands, dude. You know what I'm saying? Like that's who I was, bro. You're crazy. Oh yeah, I was just, you know, I liked it, and so I think it just kept me more in my body and more stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And so then, whenever work got busy, I didn't. Uh, that was one of the first things to really kind of go. I didn't realize it was going, but it was just. I was just too, too, it was, things were too hectic. Too caught up with uh, the career. Yeah. Yeah. So you can see after a quick laugh between friends, Theo proceeds to be playful and just express himself. Because when Joe shows that openness and acceptance, Theo knows he can continue talking, right? It's just two friends bullshitting and talking about life together. So that's been really helping, man. I go in there and there's like pro athletes in there and stuff that train. And so it's like, and there's like kids in there and this place that train. So there's like this all, it's just like a lot of good energy. Where'd you go? Um, I go to this place called Lipscomb Academy in the morning. Okay. And so there's just like a lot of fun energy in there. And uh, yeah, man, it just started to, it started to change. And then I even been doing a uh, ice bath. It's not as oh. low as yours, but I've just been doing like, um, I've just taken more time to take care of myself. That's great. You know, I so, got so busy. I just got, I got scared that my work was, you know, I don't know. A lot of things happened. I got kind of scared, you know. That happens to people when things start going well. You, yeah. you start thinking, oh my God, what if it stops going well? What if it all falls apart? That's, that's, that can be a real f- mind fuck. It fucked me. It can be a real mind fuck. It was a real, I mean, it was a raper. Notice how Joe is adding to the conversation without making it about himself. Joe describes Theo's situation in more detail and says that Theo's experience is a common one. And by doing this, Joe not only humanizes Theo, but he also shows that he knows where Theo is coming from. 
and Theo knows he's being understood. It can be a real mind fuck. It was a real, I mean, it was a raper. What was it? What caused it? Was it like, um, were you worried about ticket sales? Were you worried about coming up with new material? Were you worried about TV stuff? What were you worried about? Let me think. So I think I thought that whenever I achieved some success, and we might have talked about this a little, but that I was going to, everything was going to feel all any, any uncomfortable feelings I had. I thought all that would be, everything would be great. I thought like once I achieved some success, then it would solve everything else. And it didn't really solve anything. I just was kind of successful and now I had a lot of responsibilities. And you still have the same problems in your mind. Right. When someone is sharing how they feel, one simple thing you can do is help them get to the source of what they're feeling. This will help them process their own emotions and bring you closer to them at the same time. Now notice how Theo actually takes the time to think about his answer before he speaks. Joe has shown genuine interest, and Theo clearly wants to express himself. So when Joe keeps digging deeper and deeper to get to the source of Theo's feelings, Theo finds himself thinking about things he maybe hadn't thought about before. And this led to a more interesting answer, which led to a more interesting conversation. And remember, they got to this point in the conversation because Joe has been listening attentively, looking for opportunities to say, tell me more about that, and empathizing with Theo's feelings. I thought like once I achieved some success, then it would solve everything else. And it didn't really solve anything. I just was kind of successful and now I had a lot of responsibilities. And you still have the same problems in your mind. Right. Yeah. And, that's the thing is like people think that. And that shook me. Success is going to make you happy. It can actually make you less happy because you get stressed out about it. That's what happened. And there's a lot of pressure. Yeah. Especially our kind of success, showbiz success, because... You do, you're dealing with public criticism, you're dealing with like the performance anxiety, you're dealing with the fact that you have to schedule all these shows and go to places and the logistics and the travel wears you out and you're jet lagged and you got to wake up for the show and you know, it's yeah. like, there's a lot going on. So Joe is still simply empathizing with Theo. He's talking and contributing to the conversation, but he still hasn't said a single thing about himself. This is Theo's time to shine and Joe seems to be fine with that. So watch what happens next. You have to schedule all these shows and go to places and the logistics and the travel wears you out and you're jet lagged and you got to wake up for the show. And, you know, it's yeah, like, there's a lot going on. Yeah, a lot of responsibility. And it changes from when you were kind of doing comedy and everything was just kind of you go for a week to do some shows and then things get a lot busier, you know. Yeah. So that definitely happened for me. Um, and then I, kept, I got caught in this weird circle of like kind of self-pity in a way. I didn't realize it. Yeah, because I was not feeling good and I was like something's wrong so let me try to fix it right so I tried like all different things like uh, you know I tried ketamine ayahuasca different therapies different um, you know seeing therapists twice we just things like but I was constantly like let me try to fix this right mm -hmm. and it became almost like I was focusing on myself so much that I got caught in this little circle of like it was just just me you know yeah. And my work is me, too. You're looking at clips yourself. There's things that you going out. You have to go perform. So it was just too much me kind of, you know. Right. You weren't being a normal person. Just right. Just living life. You're just focusing on you all the time. Right. And I didn't really mean to. It just like, I don't know. It's just kind of what it became. So once I started to kind of break that up a little bit, um, yeah, things have just got What made you to decide better. to go to Tennessee? Like what, what, why did Nashville call you? You know, I, I don't know. I think I always wanted to live there. All right, my friend, I want you to stop and take note of where we have arrived in this conversation. Just a few minutes ago, these guys were making small talk about nothing. And now Theo is sharing very personal information about his mental health, drug use, going to therapy, and how he ended up losing himself in his work. At this point, the conversation began to go in a different direction, and it lasted for another hour. And they talked about all kinds of things, from working out and traveling, to what it's like to achieve some success in life. So I encourage you to watch the video again and notice how much talking Joe did. And then pay attention to the things he said and who he was talking about. You might realize that sometimes the best way to keep a conversation going is by listening attentively, finding opportunities to say, tell me more about that and showing your partner that you can relate to or at least understand them in some way.